This is a light meter, and hopefully you have one. If you don't, likely you're using your in-camera meter right here, but you have to know that in-camera meters are like bad girlfriends. I'm a bad girlfriend, Doug. They're attracted to things that are shiny, they're often manipulated, and they're easily tricked. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about the three reasons why you would ever shoot manual. Reason number one, you have a light meter. Manual, meaning the M mode, does not mean wing it. I'd like to keep it on manual control for a while. It means manual input from another source, like your light meter. Back in the day when I used to shoot Hasselblad. I don't know what that is. There's no M mode on this camera. It simply gives you apertures and shutter speeds, and that's it. It doesn't even ask you what film is in the camera or if there's film in the camera at all. Is there film at? I... I don't know. This is completely a manual camera. When we transferred over to digital cameras, there still has to be an M mode on this camera. It's for manual input from another source, like your light meter. Your light meter reads light falling onto the subject. I have a light right here. I can take a light meter reading and it's metering the light that's falling on my face based on the camera position there. It's an ambient light meter. You've seen this happen in absolutely every film. You continually see the DOP. I'm not the cinematographer taking light meter readings. The reason is because the light meter is accurate to one tenth of a stop. Very accurate and very exact. Our cameras are accurate to a third of a stop, but the difference between our camera's meter and a light meter is a light meter can read light falling onto a subject. The camera can only read the light that's bouncing off the subject and reflecting back. This internal meter is a reflective meter. And the second reason that you would ever shoot manual mode is this. You're shooting several pictures of the same scene. You take a picture in aperture priority, shutter priority. You nail a perfect exposure. You switch your camera to manual mode because you're using your master frame that you've used your camera to tell you, and then you're inputting it into manual. Now, there's a third and a final reason that you would ever shoot manual mode on your camera, it's because you have decades of experience shooting in the conditions that you're shooting today. You've shot thousands. I mean, it's just random negatives all over the place. And thousands and thousands of rolls of film, and you have an amazing experience with shooting digital. Shoot, run, oh crap, head shot from the top. You understand exposure for conditions that you're shooting because you have so much experience doing it. Decades of experience shooting manual mode, that creates a certain type of photographer. If you're new at photography, even a perfect normal exposure, the more experience you have, you'll realize there really is no such thing. But there are parameters and aims that we're trying to get to with exposure. So this is why this light meter is probably the most important thing in your camera bag. Let's sum it up in three quick steps. Number one, you're using a light meter. That's the reason to use manual mode. You're shooting in studio. This light meter also meters flash. You're aiming this dome directly at the lens. So regardless of the axis that your light's on, it's giving you a light meter reading here based on your camera position. If you have a flash back there, a flash here, a flash over there, you can take individual readings and get proper ratios. It's impossible to do that by eye. Your highlights blowing out, your highlights not appearing as highlight, that's all because you're not understanding ratios. And all of that happens when you actually understand exposure the most important thing to get out of today's video, once you have an understanding of exposure, a true understanding of exposure, 
then you can really push the boundaries of what you can do with photography. If you like these short hits of photography knowledge, beginner, intermediate, or more advanced, give this video a like. I do these videos often. I also podcast three days a week talking to you, the emerging photographer, helping you get to a better level with your pictures, whatever that level might be. I think you should watch this video next, which is all about your photography style. Once you master that exposure, that composition, you need to start getting into style. And this video nails it, I think, perfectly. We'll see you on that one.